in like my figures, which is very good. I know it's more important, but it's the main app, right? Um, so what we'll do now is, uh, for the next two sessions, is a lot shorter lecture part and a lot longer practice part, so you'll get to actually um, try out those things. Um, two things I'll do now in this session before we get started. So one thing, if you want to improve, I guess feedback is always super important. During Loomis you've probably learned this, just a very quick recall, how to give a nice feedback to people, especially in these quick circumstances. And the second one, how to structure pretty much any speech and particularly longer public speeches. Um, first of all, how to give feedback. Um, I like this idea of a sandwich rule, which means you start off with something positive, you end with something positive, and you add like the constructive feedback of how to improve in the middle. Um, logical idea behind it, to make it very, very obvious that you're benevolent towards the other person, you want to improve, you want to show that, yes, this is something nice. And that makes it so much more like, A, there will always be good things, with, no matter how bad something somebody performs. A B, it means that people are much more willing to take in the feedback. And I guess that's ultimately what you want. If you give feedback, the key idea is to improve the other person or help them improve. So if you can set a tone by starting with something nice and ending with something nice, it usually makes it much more likely. Um, what you can, and plus it gives the person also feedback what works well, at least, which is also good. So they know this is something I'm good at, this is something I need to focus on. Um, second point, I think sometimes it's good to highlight subjectivity. I guess in Loomis that's rather obvious, but it's okay to say, to me you seem nervous. To me it seems that this and this doesn't work. To, to me, I personally would recommend that you speak slower, just to make sure that not to make too blunt objective statements like you speak way too fast, you're completely unstructured or whatever, but rather, for me, it's rather difficult to follow your thoughts because you could, and then go towards the constructive feedback of saying, could you try outlining your points beforehand, of, say, of starting with point one, two, three, and then following that order. So trying to keep the feedback in the middle as constructive as possible and as likely to put into practice as possible. So meaning to give some sort of concrete idea, say you seem unstructured, have you tried taking clearer notes? Have you tried taking fewer notes with just one or two points, which you can follow more freely? Have you tried practicing those speeches three or four times at home so that you get into the flow. For me personally, this and that works. I guess those type of feedbacks usually help people improve more if you tell them, I've had this and this perception of things not going too well, you could try those and those mechanisms to improve them. That put in some sort of nice context phrase nicely usually work best. Um, what can people do who take in feedback? Be very, very open about it. Somebody willing to criticize you and step up to you and say something, this could be improved, is a gift in itself because that's not necessarily what people do in our society all the time. Um, so even if you disagree, try to appreciate it as much as possible and try not to argue against it at the time. A, that makes the whole feedback process extremely long, extremely enduring, and this incentivizes people to ever give feedback to you because they will get drawn into annoying discussions uh, all the time. But also, if you're extremely busy the whole time finding counter arguments for why the feedback does not work or is not true, chances are you're not listening particularly much to what the person is actually saying. So, so try to be as open as possible, take it in, and then afterwards think about it and try to, um, try to see what you can take out of it. That doesn't mean you need to accept all the feedback or you need to agree with all the criticism, but at least give it a chance, let it sink in, and afterwards, if you disagree, disagree. But try to, during the feedback process, at least get it in. I think that usually improves a lot. Um, second idea, how to structure pretty much any speech. Um, there's something called a five-point argument, um, which in its basics means the following. Um, you start off with a link. Um, linking can mean various things. Say you're the first speaker in a public debate or in any bigger context or you present your idea, linking means showing the context and showing why this is particularly relevant. Like why am I going to you as a local authority to present this and this proposal for your health plan? Uh, why am I starting this public debate? Why am I raising a certain point in a, I don't know, say any public speech at a political event or a class debate? Um, linking could also mean if you're not the person starting it, but the person already involved in a debate or a discussion to link back what you're referring to. So, for example, if there's been a, 
I think it's quite natural in most class debates, say you've had a 40-minute lecture that you want to ask to a specific point, you will usually introduce with one or two sentences which point you're referring to, simply to make it more likely for the audience to follow what you're going at, what's the specific point you're talking about, so that's helpful for them to get into the right mindset. The other option with linking is, of course, also that you paraphrase quickly inside a debate. Say somebody talked for three minutes to present an argument, you paraphrase the argument in one or two sentences quickly. That has a positive impact that the other person feels somewhat understood. The other person has the impression that, yes, you listen to me, you more or less got my point. And again, that's helpful because either if you paraphrase the, what they said nicely, that means the person feels understood and you got the point. If you paraphrase it really, really badly, maybe that shows them that their point wasn't clearly argued and they need to explain it more in detail and show that the problem is not necessarily the person disagrees with me, but maybe that they didn't really understand what I was going at. So generally, paraphrasing quickly with one or two sentences what you're referring to, what the person previously says, improves the debate culture for all people involved. So, so try to do it as much as possible. Doesn't need to be boring, doesn't need to be word by word what they said, but just in one or two sentences as some sort of quick rephrasal, and we're going to practice this uh, later on as well. Um, but actually, yes, in the next session. Um, okay, so that's the quick part why I think this is really, really important and a nice thing to do. Uh, when you've done that, that can be quick, two or three sentences. You do a brief outline what you're going to give. If you're in a class debate and you just have a one minute discussion, that might not be necessary because you're just giving one argument. If you're for any longer speech, I think anything longer than four or five minutes, and you have several separate arguments, several separate ideas, try to explain it briefly. Say, I want to talk about three points, public health, increasing sustainability, and I don't know, um, reducing public budgets. Um, so that people already know what's coming up. Um, two advantages, first of all, if people know the structure, they generally feel more at ease, they know what's coming and they will be more open to listen to what you're saying. Second advantage, repetition. Repeating certain key phrases, certain key arguments throughout a speech makes them more memorable. If you have certain keywords or phrases that turn up three, four times in a five minute speech, chances are at least those keywords and key ideas will stick with people rather than if you say things just once or twice. So already bringing them up once quickly in the outline increases those chances, plus the brain is usually happy when it recognizes things it knows. You might, I don't know, maybe you feel this yourself, that's usually why learning works well if you already have previous existing knowledge because you can connect those ideas. Same in a smaller context in a speech, if you already know what's coming, actually those points are coming, those structure is coming, you might have already imagined some sort of argument when you heard the outline, and then you recognize ex exactly those building blocks. It's easier to fill in for the brain, it's easier to remember, and usually those te things tend to stick a bit better. Um, then you go with three arguments, ideally. This might not work in, say, a two or three minute speech, but everything longer than that, I think structuring it in three key arguments um, is usually the best way to go. Why three? Again, arbitrary number. Apparently three is something people like because, I don't know, for some reason it works well. Um, it helps you to narrow down the arguments to what's really important. And I think if you have time to prepare a speech, sitting down and thinking, what are the three key points I want to convey? What, what are the three most important things I need to convince someone helps you to narrow down what's important and what's not. So again, questioning how could you counter it, asking yourself why, and then through those kind of practices, figuring out what you find personally more convincing. That means A, you've invested some time in it, you've figured out what are the stronger and the weaker arguments, um, and you make yourself less vulnerable to attacks. Uh, what I mean with that is some people who may be affronting your ideas and might disagree with you, if you give six arguments, out of which four are brilliant, one is okay and one is really bad, they will spend a lot of time on the one really bad argument and one on the mediocre argument and pretty much ignore the four good ones. Um, so if you want to do yourself a favor and the whole discussion a favor, try to avoid really bad or not really good arguments as much as possible and narrow it down to those things that ultimately are more important. Because usually it is two of three things that are the most important in any question discussion. There, there is a broad area of topics, but usually there's something that makes people click and makes people really convinced of your idea. And if you manage to narrow it down to those points, you usually have a more productive discussion than if you have a too broad area. So again, thinking about those is important. Mm, there are different philosophies on how to structure them. I'm going to give you two examples. So what you should do, as said, is try to find some sort of logical area. What's my strongest argument, second strongest, third strongest? Again, just to be aware what works, what doesn't. And usually in this process, this also means refining the argument. Um, one philosophy would be, say, in a class debate, 
where you don't really know how much speaking time do you have. You're in any form of discussion, you have some sort of a limited time frame which you're not aware of how long it is. Same goes, I guess, when proposing an idea to someone from a local institution, anything where you're not really sure how long the time frame is. Um, I'd recommend um, something one, two, three, in the sense starting as strong as possible, going to the second strongest argument, going to the third strongest argument. Because usually the first impression you leave sticks the longest with the person. And as you don't know when you will be forced to finish, it's really good to have developed at least the key points. There's nothing worse than having this one really good argument that you feel might help convince somebody, but because they already cut you short after two or three minutes, you cannot really develop it. Or you can develop it so briefly that it's just not as convincing as if you had started with it. Because some arguments, even when they're good, need one or two minutes explaining, three minutes of explaining. So starting as early as possible with them is just super helpful. And it limits you also, because usually the best arguments are the most in-depth, the most explained. So starting off early with them, I think, is helpful. Slightly different tactic. Um, say you have a seven-minute speech or a pu any public event where you can practice the speech and you know that you have enough time to structure it the way you want. Um, then I'd recommend going with this strategy, which would be the classical rhetorical one of two, three, one. You start with your second strongest argument, so that's still pretty good. That's still a very, very good first impression. Then you go for the third strongest. Remember, that's not a bad argument, it's just the third best. Like, it, it's still a good argument, but it's just not as strong as others. If you don't have a third strong argument, drop the third one and just go for two arguments. Um, and end with the strongest argument. Um, why would that be so? Um, psychologically, you remember the things last said the most, usually. Like, if you ask people what they retained from a speech that was 20 minutes long, chances are the last thing or the last argument talked about is the most vividly <laughs> present, A, in the discussion following afterwards, which might be interesting because you might want to discuss the most important point, or also what people take back as a message if you're a public speaker. So in those cases, it's really helpful to end as strong as possible because if they're going to forget pretty much all of your speech, but at least remember your last point, that's still your strongest point. So at least you manage that they take something out of it. Um, so in those cases, go for this strategy. And if you summed up those arguments, you've developed them nicely, kind of in the way we talked about a bit earlier, um, do a quick summary. Again, this idea, repetition, making them remember, recalling the first two arguments as well, just with some headlines so that you can connect it again. Maybe it helps to quickly repeat each argument in two sentences, but keep it a short part of your speech, five to 10% maximum. So really quite short and end with something that you might call uh, like a call of action or some sort of pulling it like into practice. Because usually what you want to do with a speech is achieve some sort of goal, some sort of action. Say a change of mind in people, a vote for a specific policy, a vote for a class trip, whatever your goal is in the circumstances. And it's nice to remind people in the end. Say like you're motivated, they're very convinced of your policy, but they don't quite know what to do next. That's probably something you want to avoid by rather presenting them an option like if you're convinced of what I just said, if you find those good arguments, please do this and this policy, vote in favor of us, start eating vegetarian food, whatever your point is you're trying to make. Um, again, I think that's a very, very helpful ending and it puts some context and some motivation, some activity into what you just said. Um, so yeah, that was the quick outline, the quick start I wanted to make. So what we're going to do now is we practice this a little bit. Um, we have the structure of how you can structure your thoughts. Um, I have some paper slips for all of you. I'd ask you everyone to take two of these um, and to write down two nouns on them. Like two, I, I don't particularly care what kind of nouns. This could be anything from, I don't know, say happiness, carbon capture and storage, um, beer, whatever you feel are good nouns you would like to have. And they could be ab abstract nouns or very concrete nouns. Just write one on each paper slip and then fold it down. Um, it really doesn't need to be very creative, but you'll get uh, to use it very, very soon in the next round. I'm not sure if there are entirely enough paper slips for everyone, so if there's not, feel free to take some or create some yourselves. Um, so what we're going to do now, I fr uh, have all these paper slips. You're going to go very soon into groups of three. Figure them out however you want to. 
disperse yourselves all the way through the room. Some people can stand here, some people can sit there, whatever you want. But you should be together in groups of three. Um, each of you will draw two paper slips out of random, out of this box. Highly likely that this won't be the ones you put in. Um, and then you will have three minutes to figure out to give a short speech on one of those. And the speech should be something, why is this the most important invention, the most important concept, or generally the best thing in the world. So try to improvise in three minutes why one of those two things you've drawn is the best thing in the world, the best invention, the best concept ever, and try to do it within this structure. So find some sort of context, why do I want to talk about this, what are the arguments I want to present, I think in three minutes, probably three arguments is difficult, so try to go for two arguments in this case and give a quick summary, quick deal to action, depending on what the invention might be. So maybe we should all go out and, I don't know, buy a Club Mater because it's the best drink invention ever, uh, or whatever your topic might be. Um, so in those cases, feel free. You'll have three minutes to prepare as soon as you draw the paper snips. And then what we'll do is, in those groups of three, one person gives the speech for three minutes, I'll ring the bell, and afterwards you get, sorry? Three minutes. Three minutes. Is that not enough or too much? I think you, you see, like, you can probably get used to it. Of course you're not forced to speak for three minutes. If you speak two minutes, that's totally cool, but three minutes is the absolute upper limit for people. Um, and then there's one minute feedback from the two people listening to you. Like, each of them has one minute to give you feedback, what worked well, what could you try to improve with your speech. When that's done, you rotate, the next person gives their three minute speech and the other two give a feedback. So we do this in three rounds and then afterwards we have some sort of general feedback altogether.